Hello and welcome to the Profitable Nomad Couple podcast. This is a show where we share all of our secrets about building a sustainable, location-independent lifestyle. We're Austin and Monica. We're a digital nomad couple here to help you develop an entrepreneurial mindset, ignite your passions, and develop a purpose-driven online business. Get ready for weekly insights and inspiring stories to empower you to live life on your own terms. So are you ready to unlock the nomad mindset and embrace a life of limitless possibilities? Let's dive in. All right, you guys, welcome back to another episode. Today we are talking about a really common phenomena, especially as online business owners. We are all going to face this at some point in our life, and I'm sure you've heard of it before, but we're going to give our own take on it. We're going to talk about it. We're going to normalize it, and then we're going to give some steps, some techniques, some tools to get out of this way of thinking. And so today, without further ado, we're going to be talking about imposter syndrome. Imposter syndrome. This is like business owners Achilles heel. This is any high achievers Achilles heel. Imposter syndrome, the name kind of spells it out. So an imposter, somebody who pretends to be somebody that they're not, somebody who is in a place where they shouldn't be. So when you suffer from imposter syndrome, you have this feeling that you don't belong in this achieving space that you're trying to be in. So let's say you're trying to start up a business as a web designer, or you are trying to be an artist and you're trying to get your art displayed in a gallery. Imposter syndrome is, is the name for that feeling when you feel like, what the heck am I even doing? Like, there's no way my art is good enough to be in this studio. There's no way that my web design skills are good enough for this client to pay me for that feeling that you, you're you not capable enough, you're not qualified, you don't have the right certifications, you don't have the right experience, you don't have the right background, all of that can are feelings that come up that we call imposter syndrome. I've also often heard it described as a fear of being found out. So it's like you sign a client and you start working on their website or you start working on their social media or you start doing copywriting or whatever it is for them. And then all of a sudden you have this deep fear that they're going to find out that you've only been doing this for a couple of months or a deep fear that, you know, Instagram changes algorithm and you don't understand it anymore because all the techniques you use have just gone out the window. And it's this deep fear that once they find that out, that you're going to be outed and they're never going to want to work with you again. And they're going to shout that from the rooftops and nobody is ever going to want to work with you. And it's, it'll create this deep sense of shame around you and your business. Yeah, I'm really glad you brought that one up, actually, because that's probably the way that I feel it the most is this fear of being found out, this fear that if we sign on a client, you know, just a week or two into it, they're going to be like, who the heck is this guy? And then my cover's going to be blown. So as Monica and I were researching this uh, before we started recording, we were looking into some quotes because we love quotes, we're quote people, and we were trying to look up some good quotes of imposter syndrome. And as we were doing that, we were looking up all the people who had quotes about it. And there were some big name people. Like think of the most high achieving successful people that you can think of. Some quotes that we found were from Michelle Obama, Robin Williams, Einstein himself, the guy who created this whole theory of relativity, like these high, high achievers, they've experienced imposter syndrome. And not only did they experience it on the way to their success, what we would consider successful while they're at the top of their game, they're feeling these imposter syndrome. They're feeling like they don't belong there. So it's not a unique experience. You're not alone for feeling it. Everyone in the world, or at least any high, any achiever in the world, anyone who's ambitious and working towards a, a goal is going to experience imposter syndrome at some point. How powerful is that, right? Like when you feel that imposter syndrome, just like take a second to realize that you feel the same thing that Michelle Obama feels, that Robin Williams felt, that Einstein felt, right? You feel the same as these high achievers because you are pushing boundaries and you are working to achieve more. If you just were to settle down in the small town and take some minimum wage job and not ever try for anything more, not try to step out of your comfort zone, not try to create anything, not try to do anything outside of the quote unquote norm, you're never going to feel like an imposter. That's the only time you're going to feel comfortable. But the second you start saying, you know what, I want more out of life and I can get more and I have the power within me to start achieving more, then those feelings of imposter syndrome are going to creep in. Then you're on the right track. I mean, that doesn't mean they don't suck because it totally sucks and it can totally like debilitate you. But how empowering is it to know that when you start feeling that, it means you're 
making progress. You are achieving. You are going towards greatness. That's so exciting. So the dark side of this is that imposter syndrome never goes away. Whether you're just starting or whether you've been doing it for decades and decades, whether you're the top performer in your industry, it's not going to go away. It's going to be there. I mean, that's the dark side. Don't focus on that. The empowering mindset behind that same fact is that because it's never going to go away, instead of waiting for it to go away in in order for you to take action, the action that you should take is learning how to live with it, how to manage it, and what can you do right now so that you don't let imposter syndrome hold you back anymore. So Monica and I have outlined six different strategies. These are things that we've done ourselves that can really, really help with this feeling of imposter syndrome and it can help mitigate it and help you overcome it. Yeah. The first one is possibly one of the hardest ones and that is to recognize it and start catching yourself in it. And this can be really hard because imposter syndrome can be such an integrated part of our lives and our days that we don't even realize we're doing it or we don't even realize that we're feeling it. So something that I've used to really help me recognize imposter syndrome and put a name to it is journaling. It's just writing down like, when have I shown up like an imposter? When have I felt like an imposter? And then I start to recognize, oh, like here, when I feel like an imposter, I immediately immediately go to the kitchen and I want to cook or I immediately want to scroll Facebook or Instagram or I immediately want to do anything but move forward. And so I start to recognize these subconscious habits that I have that come up when I'm feeling like an imposter. The more you can recognize it and put a name to it, the more power you're going to have over imposter syndrome. Our second piece of advice is to take action anyway. And that's because imposter syndrome, it's a roadblock. As soon as you start feeling these things, It's going to make you want to not do anything. You're going to want to sit down and go. You're going to be less likely to take action in the things that are going to progress you forward to achieving. So it's easy to say, harder to do. But when you have these feelings, take action anyway. Be brave, be bold, be courageous and do the things that you're afraid to do. Yeah. Action is the killer of fear. So whenever you feel fear, take action. You know, that's definitely an indicator that you need to take some uncomfortable action uh, to move past that. All right, number three is to recognize it as a common experience. You yourself are not flawed. You're not broken. You're not even unique for feeling this, okay? Everyone around you feels it too. Your clients that you're going after, they feel it too, okay? Everyone around you feels this, okay? Take comfort in knowing that there is nothing wrong with you. A lot of times we kind of feel that we are totally isolated in this, that we're in a room full of high achievers and we look around and we think there's no way that they don't belong here, right? Or that they feel like they don't belong here. That's not true, okay? At some point in their lives and possibly right in this very moment, they also feel like they don't belong. Yeah, that's a big one. Number four, this is a little bit of physiology and biology that we're going to mix in. So there's this part of your brain called the reticular activating system or RAS. And the, the point of this part of your brain is to simplify your life because you get billions and billions and billions of data points coming into your brain every second of every day. And there's no way your brain can process all of that. So you have this reticular activating system. And what it does is it filters by importance all of this information so that you only pay attention to what is most necessary. And so it trains your brain to be looking out for certain things. So the best, like easiest example for me of the system is you could be walking down the street listening to cars and motors and the wind's blowing and dogs are barking and kids are yelling. There's so much going on, but as soon as somebody says your name, you hear it. Your ears perk up and you turn to see who called your name because that's embedded in your reticular activating system. And as soon as that piece of information comes, you are it's highlighted for you. You're you're looking out for it. So when we have this imposter syndrome feelings, what we need to do is we need to retrain our brain to search for evidences that we actually are capable that we are successful, that we can achieve. And the more that we repeat that information and find evidence of this, the more likely we're gonna be to latch onto that when we have these feelings. So this is a really big one for me because my big holdup has been imposter syndrome for a long time. And especially when Monica and I started working as coaches, I've had this feeling of who am I to coach other people? Like, what are my qualifications? What are my abilities like how can i be coaching someone especially if i'm still going through some of the things that i'm coaching others on but if i take a moment and pause and i can start looking at evidences that i am a capable coach so i've helped my brother 
and Monica's mom and sister start up businesses and ideate these businesses and turn them into something bigger. Uh, we've helped handfuls of, of digital nomads on our podcast. Even if you go scroll back a few episodes, you'll find some nomadic journey Kickstarters where we have engaged with other people and, and helped them start their businesses. I'm life purpose coaching certified. Like I've gone through a certification course. I've had friends who have come to me asking for help or advice on, on different things. And if I start collecting all these things, I can create like this little filing cabinet in my brain so that when I have these feelings of not being good enough, of not belonging, of thinking, who am I to be here? I just go to that filing cabinet and pull out these examples of like, actually, Austin, you have a lot of experience in this and you're totally qualified for this. And when I pull that out and I start reading it, imposter syndrome runs away. This is such a powerful system in our brain. We have the power, like Austin said, to train our brain to go find the answers. Our brain is an answer producing machine, right? So, I mean, with the RAS function of your brain, you can literally train your brain to go find all of the reasons that you belong there, all of the reasons that you're successful. And it is, oh my gosh, it is so cool because as you train your brain, it starts to do it for you without much effort. It's That is by far one of the coolest facts I know about the brain. Okay, so number five, practice positive self-talk. Never let yourself talk to yourself in a way that you wouldn't talk to your friends. And this is incredible to me because I am so mean to myself sometimes. I am so mean to myself and I am a very nice person. I would never say these things to myself, but to other people that I say to myself. I heard a really powerful exercise that a therapist had this guy do and he was you know over 40 for 40 years he had been totally beating up himself and that's how he was getting himself to be motivated is he would just yell terrible things at himself and so his therapist said hey you know what any time that you start thinking negatively about yourself, I need you to write a letter to your best friend and say exactly what you're thinking. No cheating. You have to write down pen to paper exactly what you're telling yourself right now and address it to your best friend. And then like to take it one step further, the therapist was like, and then send it to me, you know? And so instantly, like all of these terrible things that he was saying about himself, he had to see it on paper addressed to his best friend. If he had been talking to his best friend like that, they would not be friends. <laughs> so the moral of this story is, is to make sure you are aware of how you are treating yourself. Be your own best friend. Be nice to yourself. And I'm, I mean, I'm telling this to you, but most of them telling this to me, like you need to be nice. I need to be nice. We all need to be nicer to ourselves. This is hard. Life is hard. Starting a business is hard. We don't need to be our own worst critic. Okay. We can help ourselves really feel successful and feel good and build ourselves up instead of constantly tearing ourselves down. I love it. B-Y-O-B-F. Be your own best friend. Write that on your mirror. Write it on your car. Make a sticker. Okay, number six. Our very last piece of advice is to surround yourself with supporters. This might maybe seem counterintuitive because if you're surrounding yourself with other high achievers, maybe you would think that would make it more likely that you have these imposter syndrome feelings. But if you can surround yourself with other people who are experiencing the same things that you are, other people who are also trying to achieve and also have these imposter syndrome feelings. And especially if you can allow yourself to be vulnerable with them and open up to them and share when you're having these feelings, they're gonna support you when you're in those low moments. Maybe they're gonna be the ones to come to you with the, that evidence that you are capable and successful. Or maybe they're gonna be the one to talk to you like your best friend and tell you what you need to hear and give you the, the encouragement that you need. Uh, maybe they're just going to relate to you and say, you know what, man, I've been there too. Like I've been in that same situation. I know how hard it feels. And sometimes that's what we need. Um, but if you can surround yourself with the support group, um, that's going to lift you up more than so many other things, more than cut out the more than just going to lift you up. Yeah. So to wrap up, to sum up all of these six points, let's just go over them really fast. Number one, to recognize and catch yourself when you're feeling imposter syndrome. Number two, take action anyway, even if you're scared, just do it. Number three, recognize this is a common experience and you are not defective for feeling it. Number four, your reticular activation system. Train your brain to look for all the ways that you are successful, all the ways that you deserve to be here. Number five, 
practice positive self-talk. Be your own best friend. And number six, surround yourself with other people who are going through a similar situation, who understand what imposter syndrome feels like, who understand what it's like to be striving for something more and to be aiming to achieve greatness. Yeah, put those six things into practice, you guys, and you're gonna beat this. Let's overcome imposter syndrome. Thanks so much for joining us here on the Profitable Nomad Couple podcast. We appreciate you listening to us today. If you enjoyed this episode, share it on Instagram and be sure to tag us at Austin and Monica. Together, we can inspire others to embrace a location-independent lifestyle. And while you're there, we'd love to connect with you. So make sure you follow us for more tips and inspiration on living your dream location-independent lifestyle. Until next week, remember that you have the power to shape your own path. So stay curious, stay adventurous, and stay connected.